Hello, I just wanted to take uh, the time to talk a little bit more about annotations now that you have done the first annotation. So um, I don't count off for this first round of annotations because you are just getting the feel for it unless you left something blank and then of course uh, you get counted off for that. Um, anyway, so the first video that I shared with you last week showed you my literal an annotated page. And ideally, that is what you will do. You will mark up your own written work. You will get active and engaged with the reading. Um, once you have done that, then you select one annotation per page to share with me. And so I'm going to show you what I'm looking for because there were some differences in the way you submitted these. First of all, let me remind you that these areas right here, these are just ideas, okay? Ideas of things that you are looking at. Um, but by no means are you, do you have to do all of these? Um, as long as you are engaging with the text, that is all I'm looking for. Um, for the most part, you all were not specific enough in this area, area of interest. And so let me show you what I'm looking for here. So I went ahead and did the EMIG annotation from my marked up pages. And this is how I would like for you to turn in your annotations going forward. So be very specific in the area of interest. So for page 122, I say this. EMIG discusses the difference between first order and second order processes with talking and listening characterized as first order processes. Reading and writing is second order. Note that when it is word for word from the text, I put it into two quotation marks. Now, um, why why have I marked this? Well, it made me think about something. It made me make a connection. Most of these should be making a connection. And so for me, this makes me think of how babies babble and communicate in their own way. Then toddlers become very good at listening and talking. Obviously, when they get ready to read and write, it takes someone working with them, whether it is a parent or Sesame Street. This must be the difference between first and second order. Like I'm figuring out without her explaining necessarily to me what first and second order may mean. Page 123, Emig states, writing is originating and creating a unique verbal construct that is graphically recorded. Again, this is just one of my annotations and this is all very personal. Every one of you is going to mark something different because something is going to stick out to you that didn't to someone else. Here's what I say about that. This is an interesting definition of writing. As mentioned in the text, writing is a form of verbal language, but in the case of writing, it is a verbal language which is graphically recorded. Okay, for page 124, this is what I wrote. Emick points out that in writing, the audience is absent. She also explains that writing produces a product. So I kind of picked on two things there in the left column of page 124. And I say this. While it is obvious that talking and writing are different, these two explanations and their differences make total sense in a way Writing is more difficult because the writer has to imagine the audience, but it also creates a record, something that most conversations do not have. I love that about writing. Page 125. Emig states, the importance for learning of a product in a familiar and available medium for immediate, literal, that is visual, rescanning and review cannot perhaps be overstated. She goes on to point out that this is the process of revision. This is the beautiful thing about writing. With the very first words of the first draft, there are at least words on paper. We can revisit these over and over again, adding, deleting, changing. The product during creation is available to manipulate. Page 126. Emig says that writing is self-rhythmed and one writes best as one learns best at one's own pace. This shows how personal and unique writing is. The task then is to figure out what that pace is. Page 127. Emig says that writing is epigenetic. Epigenetic means change, evolution, adaptable, and multilayered. Through brainstorming, pre-writing, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing, we can see the evolutionary nature of writing. It evolves. And finally, on page 128, I wrote, On this final page, Emig compares writing with other learning strategies. And according to the comparison, writing is a rich mode of learning. So I hope this helps you to see what I mean by area of interest get specific with the area from the actual text and then over here in annotation these are your thoughts and your ideas about that from the text i hope this helps thanks